Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Sorry, I don't know speak good Mandarin. I was speaking English. Forgive me. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, I would like to thank the uh, um, IGSE for giving me this opportunity to share my experience in Haifu. Um, um, the summary of what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to briefly talk about the uh, development of Haifu uh, for fibroids and endomyosis in Hong Kong as a whole. And then I'm going to talk about the use of Haifu and fibroids, the Haifu for fibroids and endomyosis in the hospital I work at, uh, Queen Mary Hospital. And then I'm going to give you a review on our experience on using the JC system in the treatment of um, uh, high fluid and uh, uh, fibroid and adenomyosis. Um, the history of high food in Hong Kong, um, we have counted uh, way back in 2000, uh, 2007 when um, you can hear it, when there's a private hospital. Um, when, a, when a private hospital in Hong Kong um, installed the extra blade, which is the MR guided hyphen system uh, developed in Israel, and they did uh, 17 patients uh, um, uh, with complete treatment without any complication, and they reported that in 2000, um, 2009, I think, and the results show that the mean NPV was 67%, Mean treatment time was 3.4 hours and the fibroid strength by 25% at three months, and the symptom was reduced from 37 to 25 at three months. For some reason, they stopped this treatment, uh, probably because of the fact that it is expensive and also, uh, and also because the treatment time is very long. So I guess they stop it. Uh, and in fact, on the high line, they work, they, they do that, and then they stop it eventually. Uh, about 2012, in another hospital, at Prince of Wales Hospital, um, they do high food, uh, ultrasound guided high food using the uh, Shanghai system, uh, which is a little different if you compare the treatment head uh, of this system. Um, um, it, this treatment head is separated uh, 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 on its own, but, but in our system, it is, it is only one piece. So that's a little different, and they use a modified protocol consisting of repeated and shortened treatment of high output, high input acoustic intensity and intensified sonication pulses. They did it on 20 patients with 22 fibroids, and apparently the symptoms was improved from 1.3 to 0.84, and, uh, and the amount of bleeding, uh, menstrual bleeding decreased from 278 to 185. Fibroid volume was reduced 17% in three months. In 2019, they used another protocol and they concluded that the oxytocin augmented and the sedating high food for uterine fibroid uh, was better with oxytocin. And this is what they did. And again, again, for some reason, they stopped doing this. Uh, and I don't know the reason why they stopped doing this. So around the same time when we started uh, the high food in 2012, I started to do high food and learn high food from Chongqing. Um, so in 2012, we started high food uh, for the treatment of fib or fibroid, and you can see this is Queen Mary Hospital. Um, at 2016, we started high food treatment for adenomyosis, and in fact, we are the first center in Hong Kong to treat adenomyosis with high food. Um, we have been using the JC system. And, it, and this year, we are changing it to the JC300. Um, we also published the first report on the use on the measurement of AMH level uh, to measure the ovarian function of before and after high flu, and we reported that in 2016. And we also uh, present some preliminary clinical outcome on the treatment of fiber and neuromyosis in 2019 and 2022, uh, respectively. So this is the summary of what we um, what we have been doing. Uh, this is our preliminary experience, and you can see uh, we report the first twenty cases, and we found that the um, the fiber volume was reduced uh, by 57, 60, and seventy five percent at three, six, and twelve months after treatment. So this is the summary. And as far as symptom goes, again the symptom decreased 
to uh, uh, 30 to 50 percent compared with the treatment of the last three to 12 months after treatment. So this is our preliminary experience on doing high food for fibroids. Um, we're always excited to see cases that are, that are responding, and these are one of those uh, that, that we find it's very exciting. And you can see the fibroid uh, size reduced from um, six centimeter to about two centimeter after treatment. And in fact, these are the cases that you want to see. And if you have problem, if the patient has problem with bleeding and all that, you can easily resect the fibroid hysteroscopically without any problem. So, so basically, one of the purpose nowadays to do HIFU is to convert uh, a, a, a fibroid um, um, of is to facilitate hysteroscopic removal of fibroid after high food treatment. So this is one of the purposes of doing this also. Um, again, another good responder for endomyosis. You can see that the uh, um, uh, this is um, 43 year old woman with endomyosis. You can see after treatment, you can oh, you can see a five by six by six centimeter ablated area uh, for the endomyosis. Um, as I mentioned, we did um, um, AMH level to measure the ovarian function uh, after uh, treatment. The reason is when I first doing this procedure, I always concerned that this treatment may affect ovarian function. The principle behind this, uh, whenever the ultrasound wave passes through the pelvis, there's a possibility that the ultrasound wave can affect, can hit the ovary and affect the ovarian function. So that's why I did uh, AMH level. Uh, before high food treatment and one month, three months, and 12 months after high food treatment to see whether there's any change in the AMH measurements. And we found that there's no difference between the AMH level before or any time after treatment. And we thought that, and also there's no patient became a menorrhea or reported symptoms suggestive of menopause. So our experience suggested that ovarian function does not seem to be affected by ultrasound guided hyphal in the treatment of uterine fibroids. Um, our study has limitations. One is uh, the sample size is very small, and most of our patients, when we first started doing hyphal, we did on, on patients over 40 years old and potentially perimenopausal, and those patients have low baseline AMH level. So whether the same findings apply to younger women of reproductive ages required for the evaluation. The rate and also the duration of follow-up was only 12 months. Following our report, there are a number of other reports that do the same uh, uh, tests. And uh, in fact, what they find is uh, uh, basically they support our experience that ultrasound got high food does not affect ovarian reserve. Um, Lastly, I'd like to review our experience uh, uh, um, from Queen Mary Hospital using the JC system. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are in the process of changing to the JC300. So I, I hope that uh, with the use of the new machine, uh, we have wider application, less case exclusion, and better outcomes. The, the reason why I mean, what I mean by less case exclusion is because we have excluded quite a number of patients with that new myosis with the JC machine because um, the target is too small and, is, and the image is not very, um, very good. So we, we decided not to do that. Again, uh, this review uh, um, revealed the follow up of patients that was discharged from the clinic. So we have a long, long uh, uh, follow up uh, duration of up to 95 months. So you are talking about eight years of follow up after high food treatment. And in some way, we we look at the long-term effectiveness of this uh, 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 treatment. Uh, in fact, if you look at a lot of studies on high food treatment, the follow-up period is only two to three years. So, so the long-term treatment is also very important. So that's why we have been follow-up quite a number of patients for about five to eight years. We have 81 patients performed in 79 premenopausal women and 65 women for fibroids and 14 for endomyosis. Um, um, if you notice these are the patient's characteristics and you look at that, um, there are a number of patients, uh, one patient uh, with fibroid and one patient with endomyosis is two treatments. Uh, the reason behind was different because for the patient with fibroids, that patient, I have two treatments for one patient for the fibroid because 
Uh, she had multiple fibroids, and I did the HIFU as a two-stage procedure. But for the patient with adenal myosis, I did it twice because after the treatment, she is not satisfied with the result. So I repeated again, and she actually requested to have it repeated again. And that's why this is a treatment failure for the first uh, high food treatment. So the, the, the outcome is different. So for the patient with adenal myosis, the repeat one is a re-intervention. But for the patient with fibroid, it is not a re-intervention. It is part of the procedure. So as I mentioned, the follow-up duration was up to 95 months, the result was up to eight years, and then myosis up to five years. Um, complications, uh, uh, it's probably most important, I think, because uh, uh, we need to do it safely. And uh, we, have, we do have some complications, so I must admit that. And for fibroid, the major complication rate is 1.5%. Um, the, the most severe one is patient with pelvic inflammatory disease, and septicemia, but for the patient with retinal myosis, we do have one patient with bowel injury, unfortunately, and there's another patient with prolonged pain during birth injury. But other than that, there are other minor uh, complications. Um, changes in fibroid volume and symptoms. Um, um, for fibroid volume, we find that the, um, the fibroid volume was reduced by 50% at six months and 66% at 12 months. And uh, for symptom, the uh, symptom uh, was reduced by 44% in six months and 50% in 12 months. So most of them have an obvious improvement of symptoms and the volume size. For adenal myosis, uh, um, um, we, look, we, we do look at uterus and adenal myosis volume, but I think the, as, as far as treatment goes for women with adenal myosis, I think the symptom improvement is most important and the size of the uterus. So, so um, uh, let's look at the symptoms and, and we measure the um, menstrual pain score. And we can see that for, at six months, the menstrual pain score was reduced by 60%. And at 12 months, the menstrual pain score was reduced by 50%. And for symptoms, the virility score uh, was reduced. At three months, was reduced by 38%. And for 12 months, was reduced by 20%. By 40%, I'm sorry. Most important is immune interventions. Um, it is quite important as far as patient goes because I think this is the big questions the patient asks me when I when I offer this procedure. The chance that a fibroid patient with fibroid at least the intervention in our series is 21%. But if we look at that, there's quite a number of them have uh, vaginal hysteroscopic myomectomy. And in fact, nowadays, we look at this hysteroscopic myomectomy uh, um, as part of the procedure. In other words, the high flow facilitate this procedure. So that's why I have a readjusted rate, which in fact we take patient who we take those patients out, the patient who has hysteroscopic myomectomy out, and the adjusted rate was only 10%. So in other words, 10% of patients needs to intervention like hysterectomy, myomectomy, that sort of things. All right, uh, because I don't think we should include those with hysteroscopic myomectomy. Um, um, Adenomyosis, the reintegration rate is a little high, 75%, partly because uh, we, our number of patients is not that many. Uh, we have three patients who have hysterectomy, one patient who had adenomyomectomy, and one patient have repeat high flow. Um, pregnancy after high food, we have one patient with annual myosis, has spontaneous pregnancy 24 months after high food treatment. Uh, antenatal cause was un unremarkable. She had an emergency cesarean section, fulfilled in induction at 40 weeks gestation. Baby was perfectly well. So uh, we have no, basically not much concern with that uh, as far as uh, pregnancy, high food, pregnancy after high food goes. So in summary, ultrasound guy got high food provides symptomatic relief to most patients with uterine fibroids and adenomyosis, myosis, and is a promising uterus-bearing treatment alternative for patients with these conditions. Thank you for your attention.